Growing up as a kid, I'm not sure I ever thought that I would be like building data centers, but I definitely knew that I wanted to do something in the water sector. When you think about AI, you might not think about water, but people like Bo think about it a lot. I would tell you there is unlimited demand for AI data centers. As AI grows, many are concerned about its water usage. Water connects every aspect of life. Our economy is based on data centers, the cloud, AI. How do we ensure that we're managing demand for water resources effectively? So why does AI use water in the first place? You know, there is a lot at stake. We need to get this right. And how is this technological revolution going to change our planet? This is a data center in Ohio. Data centers power the digital economy, and AI is operating on servers found in a data center. As AI becomes a more integral part of our lives, what's happening inside these data centers is changing too. These chips are very powerful, and they get really hot. A typical server rack generates the heat of around one barbecue grill. An AI rack can generate the heat of around six barbecue grills. Whenever you ask your phone to help navigate you, streaming services, social media, AI is being used all the time, you know, that heat has to go somewhere. So what do we do to balance the heat that's being generated? We could always just use power, like standard air conditioning, to help cool the rack down. No water required. But you have to use more power for that. But using only power for all data centers brings its own challenges. The economy can only grow as fast as the grid right now. And we don't have the ability to provide unlimited power. Another way to cool is by using water. So think of it like you're taking your hat, soaking it, and then throwing it on your head. Great way to cool off. So you can remove some power and then use some water. In many cases, water-based cooling systems can help reduce the electrical energy needed for cooling, as water typically transfers heat more efficiently than air alone. In fact, using water and methods like direct evaporative cooling can reduce operational energy use by 25 to 35 percent during peak summer periods. Our goal is to minimize water and power use and the best way we know how to do that is by having a balance of power and water. This balancing act in reality is more three-dimensional. In cooler climates, like in Ohio, we don't even need to use water for 97 percent of the year. On a hot day, we just need to add water. Only enough until we have a perfect balance again. And then there are places like Cape Town where communities are facing extreme water scarcity. In that case, we've made a very deliberate decision to not use water for cooling because it's the right thing for the community. So while using water and power together to cool data centers can be an efficiency gain, many wonder if there's more that needs to be done. This is a breakthrough moment. Water is a resource that we need to protect. AWS is continuing to drive down our water use through a mix of water efficiency, switching from potable to recycled water within our data centers, reusing our cooling water, focused on replenishment. Whatever the key water challenges are in that basin where we're operating, we set a target to be water positive by 2030, which means that we're going to return more water to communities than we use in our data center operations. And taking a broad view, as more companies seek to rely on renewable energy sources such as wind and solar, there is the potential to decrease overall water use in the power sector in general. Additionally, many in the water industry are hopeful that AI can help increase water efficiencies. To manage their infrastructure more effectively, to reduce leakages. Predictive analytics, real-time monitoring. We've been able to reduce the amount of water we need for our server operations by 40% in just four years. That just kind of shows that we can do this. We're at an important moment in history, and what this technology uses and does is very much being shaped. When we decide to build this infrastructure, we need to go build sustainably, thoughtfully, and responsibly. <laughs>